Hey, what's going on guys? My name's Adam. Welcome to Driven Productions. If you're new to the channel, we usually produce enthusiast car reviews like the cars you see in this shot. We've got hundreds of them on the channel. But if you happen to be a motorcycle guy, as I am, I'm gonna be telling you about this motorcycle today. All right guys, if you're not familiar with the CBO this specific year, this is painted by hand. I believe it's a seven layer paint. It's done by a company that Harley contracts with called Gunslinger. And when I say seven layers, I mean, it is absolutely the most beautiful thing. And you can actually feel the layers as you run your hand across it. So it would appear they start with black, then they do a silver, then they do the orange, and they do this extra airbrush, then they hand paint all of these lines. And you can actually see, you know, where the hand painted kind of the, the brush, see how it kind of got a little bit less on the brush there. And again, hand painted all the way down here. It, it just, it's so incredible, the detail of this particular bike. And then this flake, this has a beautiful orange flake. It's very, very similar, as a matter of fact, to the Corvette Sebring Orange, which I have over here. So this is, this is actually a reason why I bought this car is because I love that color orange. And so they're very, very similar. So to me, this is the closest thing to Harley Davidson Orange. But then as you go through the bike, I mean, see how this orange carries through here, carries through the, the air filter carries through the back with the CBO logo. Again, the CBO logo is there and it's a little more modern here as well. It's just fantastic. Now this bike is a matter of fact, I just bought it out of Ava Maria, Florida. And so I found this bike on Facebook Marketplace and the guy was listing it for $38,000 and it had 5,000 miles. So I immediately was like, okay, here we go. This is now more normal pricing, right? The guy had 5,000 miles on it and so I thought, okay, maybe I can get it for around that price. I can live with that. It's not $50,000 bike, right? But what I ended up learning is he had put a lot of extra money into the bike. He has the Reinhardt mufflers on here and you see all these lights here. These are all aftermarket performance enhancing lights. They give you a lot more visibility. All of this right here is all aftermarket. In fact, what I'll do is I will turn it on for you once I grab my jacket and get the key. All right, I just turned the motorcycle on guys and I wanted to share with you these aftermarket lights because they really look good. You see how much visibility that adds? Definitely helps with the road. And let me go ahead and turn on the blinkers for you so you guys can get an idea of what that does. Pretty impressive actually, the amount of added lights he did. See that right there? So that's on the back and then this gentleman also put those added lights on the front. See how they have this light right here and those down there. I love that. He said those lights were $3,000. You can also see the additional LEDs on the front here and they're white. So when you're not doing the indicators, let me show you that. It's just white. See, isn't that cool? So I'm all about, you know, see me on the road visibility. So I love that he added these lights for $3,000. He added the Reinhardt exhaust and he had a gentleman that he knows and contracts with that hand painted all of this extra detailing here, here. That does not come from the factory. Be mindful of that, okay? He hand painted it here and here. He hand painted it here, okay? And then also here. And he actually put his, the artist signed his name there. Again, what a cool detail. I absolutely love that. You know, I'm more of an old school guy when it comes to motorcycles and paint and things like that. And so the fact that he hand did this is absolutely incredible. And I love how you can kind of see how, you know, he starts and stops the lines. Stuff like that I'm a sucker for, what can I say? Um, now, when I got the motorcycle, I rode it all the way back from Ave Maria, Florida. I live in Nashville, so it was a, gosh, I wanna say 1200 mile ride. The bike was fantastic. He had recently changed the oil. I ended up purchasing the bike directly from him. He put it on a trailer and met me when I was on vacation in Florida. Really nice guy. Turns out, he, I mean, he came with his, his like friend and his wife. I got to know them a little bit. Turns out he actually worked for Harley Davidson on the line as, as part of their engine and engineering department. And I thought that was the coolest thing. So he knew all about the bike. You know, he was able to get these bikes for MSRP or a little bit of a discount. And so he just, he just knew everything about the bike. And the reason why he was selling it is because he had the new model. And it's funny too, because he was telling me he's actually not as excited about the new model as he was for this. And I go, why are you selling it? He's because, well, you know, it's, it's just what I do. I always get the new model, it's part of my thing. And I'm like, I got it. So, you know, I think it's just to support Harley, who knows. But look at the attention to detail in this bike, guys. You see this right here is chrome, and then this is all black. 
I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And then you come over here to the engine and you can see again, you've got your, you know, your push rods are in the same color orange here. It's just, you know, it's really, really nice. Everything is chrome. Everything feels heavy, right? Everything is real. Like there's just no plastic on the CBOs, right? Everything just has an incredible tactile feedback. And then look at the gauges in this bike. Tell me those are not the best looking gauges on any motorcycle. I love them. I've had about 14 different bikes, everything from BMW GTL 1600s, all the way to, you know, obviously my five Harleys I've had previous, all the way to Ducatis. You can see two Ducatis are sitting in the garage right now. So trust me, I've had a lot of experience. To me, these are the best looking gauges. This is some of the best instrument cluster. I love riding it. I also love that you have the ability to put a pair of sunglasses or a phone there. You also have the ability to connect your phone here and it syncs with the system really well. You can even talk to your phone. It just works really well, guys. And overall, everything. I mean, see how this has the CVO here? It's got the uh, the gas cap that's even chrome. I mean, every attention to detail that, that could have been done on this bike is done. Now, if you don't know, the 2022s have this, the 117, whereas if you were to go with the new version of the bike, they bumped it, now it's in the, I think, I think it's 121, whereas the last version, the bike that I had over here, was a 114. Now, I wanna share this with you real quick. This is also a fantastic motorcycle. I'm actually selling this bike right now, and, uh, and trust me, guys, like I have taken really good care of this bike. Let me open up the window I wanna share. So this bike has 23,000 miles. It has literally never let me down, always fires up. I love that these bikes have the water cooling here. And so when you're at a, a stoplight for a long time or you're in bumper to bumper traffic, it's so nice because the fans kick on and it, these are water cooled heads. Now this bike has the exact same technology. Uh, so they both run really cool. And what that allows it to, to have is it just doesn't roast your you know what too bad. And so just a really great bike to ride. It's so comfortable. I, I sit back on this particular bike. It's an adjustable one as that one is. I used to kick these out, right? And just literally lay my feet all the way back like this, you know, and just, just butter. Cruise control. One thing I didn't like about the 114, at least on this particular year, is six gear was a little, um, I don't, I don't want to say it was, it was, it was just a little, I, I used to rev about almost 3,200 RPMs doing about 80 miles an hour, maybe even 3,400 RPMs, whereas this bike has a much better overdrive gear. Uh, when you're doing 80 miles an hour, you're doing just under 3,000. So you get a little bit better fuel economy, believe it or not, even though that has more power and performance than this one. It's also a little quieter because you're not revving as high. So that was the only negative of this engine, although either way, you can still do, you know, this engine would do 80 miles an hour all day long, 500 miles of it, never complain. Otherwise, you know, the gauges are very similar but this is all just plastic, plastic, right? Plastic, plastic, you know, this is just like standard. Whereas on that bike, everything is just totally punched up, right? Obviously, obviously this is all different. You don't have a chrome, it's plastic, right? The gauges aren't all customized. This isn't all gloss black. So again, you get what you pay for, at least with Harley. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really expensive. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, uh, it's crazy expensive. Uh, I don't think the average person is gonna be affording a $50,000 motorcycle and this MSRP, like I said, was I think 47.8 or, or 49, but still. Now, I'm gonna show you just a few more details here and then we'll, we're gonna go for a ride, but look at the Alcantara with the leather, the extra stitch lines here, the CBO. This is also a heated seat, which is fantastic. This is all adjustable if you want. Your passenger has the, the chrome back pegs as well. Fantastic if you do want to take your wife out. Um, this is all locking storage as well. It's all lined with a really nice kind of soft material. I mean, it, it's just, what the heck is this? Oh, look at that. They gave him a little uh, stand. Oh, I might use that. That might be good for the garage. So everything is lockable with a key. In fact, let me share with you the guys the key. All right guys, here is what the CVO key looks like. And it's just a really nice key. I mean, everything is lockable, unlockable. I love that about the, this particular bike. I love that feature. 
That bike has lockable storage, but it's all manual. You have to bring the key with you. Again, you know, everything is just soft and lined. It's just premium. You know, they give you all of this extra stuff. They give you the tool kit, this nice pouch here. They even give you this little extra pocket as well. It's where I put my sunscreen. Again, guys, you get a 12 volt here if you need to charge something back here. It's just really nice, you know? They, they give you a light here, which you don't get on that particular bike. So if you unload your bike at night, again, you see a light here, another nice feature to have at night. So it's just got everything that they offered, right? And, and that, again, you pay for it, but in the end of the day, at least you're getting something for your money. This bike feels quality. Um, now that brings me to the next point. It's very heavy. And so if you're not used to riding a motorcycle, this is not the bike you want to buy. That's for sure. Because you're going to drop it. Um, same thing with this bike, frankly, guys. I mean, this bike weighs 900, 900 pounds, right? So the fact is this bike is heavy. This bike is even heavier. But again, when you ride the road glide, people are always asking me, God, why do you like Harleys? Like, why, why do you like these bikes? Like, gosh, you're, you're a young guy. This is not really like a, like you're not there. They're, they're what you'd call avatar, right? I'm not really their avatar. Um, their avatar is like a 50 plus year old guy. I mean, every guy I've ever seen riding Harleys for the most part is an older guy, right? With, with a lot of gray hair. And I'm in my thirties. Well, the reason is, is because this bike is the best riding motorcycle I've ever ridden. It's the most comfortable. It's just got a vibe to it. And it's so easy to ride because all of the weight, you see how the forks here, guys, are completely detached from the motorcycle in the sense that all of the weight of the fairing is on the bike. See how this is attached to the frame and the engine? And so this is all free. And so what that does is it lightens up the handlebars so much when you're riding and uh, it can trip you out a little bit because you can be full lock, you know, lock like this and obviously everything is still pointing straight and some people can't get used to that and that's why they prefer the bat wing, right? Which everything turns together. But keep in mind, you're gonna have the weight of this, all the gauges and the technology and then you're also gonna have whatever you've got in the side pockets and that can really get heavy, especially when you're in traffic and whatnot or you know, just navigating a parking lot. But beyond that, guys, the bike is so easy to ride, fires right up. It sounds good. In fact, why don't we roll it out of the garage and let's start it up. Okay guys, like I said, this bike is pretty heavy. Now when I throw my leg on it, you can throw it all the way over. So you can do like this, but keep in mind, you've got to clear that backrest and oftentimes I will hit this. So I typically just grab my leg and kind of throw it over and it is what it is. It doesn't look that sexy, but uh, I also should note that I had this entire vehicle paint film protected, what they call PPF, paint protection film. And so by, by Expel, which is the best in the business. So all of this is actually covered in a clear plastic. If I didn't tell you that, you probably wouldn't even know. But this paint, as glorious as it is, is gonna stay really new and, uh, and looking good for a long time. So I'm really happy about that. I wanna give a shout out to Nowhere Automotive in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, my boy Keaton did it. Uh, really, really did a great job. Um, you know, had to modify the template a lot from Harley to get it just right. And uh, then he's gonna ceramic coat this bike in about a week. And this bike should stay perfect, frankly, for the next several years. And then when I'm ready, I'll take the PPF off. It'll be brand new paint and then just do it again. Cause I plan on riding this bike guys into the ground, okay? So let me bring it outside. It is absolutely the most glorious day today. Literally, could not be nicer. All right, guys, look at this bike in the sun. God, what a glorious looking bike. Tell me that that's just not, that's just not the best looking bike Harley ever made. I mean, I get it. You gotta be a fanboy of road glides. You gotta be a fanboy of Harley Davidson in general, but in the end of the day, check it out. See that beautiful flake? This thing just pops. Uh, there's really no bad lines or bad angles on it. And I absolutely think it looks great. And I get a ton of compliments on this bike. Whereas that bike, as good as it was, I only got a handful of guys that ever said anything about it. And the main reason was frankly, that uh, you gotta be a Harley guy to love it, right? So in order to start this motorcycle, it's actually insanely easy. You just turn it over here, hit this button right here. Now keep in mind, if you do not have this key on you, well, I hope that the wind is not too bad, guys. I'm really sorry about that. It's just one of those breezy days. But if you don't hit that key, it will not start, okay? Now, the only thing you gotta do after that is come down here and fire it up. It's right here. There you go. These Reinhardts are a little bit louder than stock, but overall, 
sounds really good. A little more throaty, a little more balls to it, you know? When you're riding though, I gotta be honest, this actually sounds almost stock because you still kind of hear the spark plugs, but you do hear a little more rumble, just a little bit louder, okay? Woo, it's like, it is freaking windy today. Look at this, Jesus. Anyway, you never know what you're gonna get when it comes to the weather. So that's what she sounds like, guys, so. Now that it's warmed up, I thought I might share the bike with you one more time. And you can see, guys, I mean, it's still got that Harley vibe, right? The engine vibrates pretty good. You can see it just shaking there. But once you get into the gear, these bikes smooth out better than anything else you'll, you'll experience. They're just absolutely butter. And uh, God, that, that just to me looks like such a good looking bike. That's why I bought it, guys. I mean, a lot of this is just personal. But uh, for me, this is probably the last bike I'm gonna probably buy, at least as a tour. And um, I'm gonna just put a ton of miles on this thing. I always find it funny when guys buy these CBOs and put like no miles on them and just keep them in the garage. I mean, this bike already has 1,500 miles since I bought it, which isn't even a month ago. I'm gonna put another 200 on it today. I'm about to take a road trip next week. Probably gonna go to the mountains. She's gonna have probably another 1,000 miles on it. So. Mark my words, I'll have 40,000 miles on this bike before most guys would probably even have 4,000, you know? But I love it. And, and I'll tell you what, when this engine goes at maybe 80, 100, 150,000 miles, I'm going to just put another one in there and I'll just put whatever the new engine is if it's good, right? But yeah, overall, that to me is the best looking bike that Harley has designed. thought I might give you just a quick rev or two, just real quick. You can see it's not super precise, right? You see how it has a slight delay? Like this is full throttle. See what I mean? It takes a little bit of fuel to get it going. Although when you're riding, she's got plenty of power. That's for sure. Well guys, I just rode the bike, uh, I don't know, good hour. And uh, we're over here on the Notches Trace, just a really beautiful place that we get to come to a lot. If you haven't been in the Notches Trace, you gotta check it out. I actually met up with my dad here. Here's my father, Larry. And Larry, my dad, is the influence, absolutely the influence, on why I ride motorcycles because uh, I don't think any of my friends, as a millennial, I don't think any of my friends ride. I have maybe one millennial friend that does, right? So he is the reason I definitely ride. You know, when I grew up, he would be on these long trips, right? Uh, several hours at a time and or he'd be gone for weeks and he'd come back with all these fun exotic stories and photos and... He's a crazy man. Yeah, he's a little, cra I mean, people definitely thought he's a little crazy, uh, but, but you know, I always enjoyed the stories. He used to bring little trinkets and things and, and adventures from his story. And, you know, when I became around uh, 21, I decided, you know, it's something we could do together. I, I learned how to ride, right? And uh, started on a little Honda Shadow 750, uh, crashed it in a church parking lot. And, uh, you know, that's, that's how we started. <laughs> so, so what do you think about the, uh, the CVO Road Glide? That's the nicest bike I've ever seen in my life. Are you kidding? Yeah. Absolutely. Look well, you that. ride an Indian, so I ride you know. an Indian. I know, but if you want the, the uh, creme de la, de la creme and the top of the line, and the color is edible. It's edible. You need it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very sexy. Good sitting there. You got it all on this thing. Well, you've had, you had what, five Harleys in a row, and then you started going to Indians, and, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is the Challenger, right? And this has got the new water-cooled engine. Uh, this is like the Road Glide Special. This is obviously not the Pursuit, which has the tour pack and the extra water cooling and lowers, but um, what do you think about this bike in comparison to the Harley? I mean, you, they haven't been able to get you to back on a Harley in, what, 10 years, five years, at least. Yeah. I think he it's, went to the Roadmaster in what, 2019? Uh, no, before oh, that. 17. 16. 16, yeah. Well, it's been almost 10 years. Yeah. Eight years. Well, the Roadmaster is a different engine than this. The Roadmaster is more like the Harley. Right. Of course, this is a step above, if you ask me. <clears throat> think so? Absolutely. Yeah. Step above Harley? Well, it's. Or a step above the Roadmaster? It's a, it's a different. You know, they're different. They're both wonderful. They're both top-notch. Yeah. Uh, 
know what I like about this bike is it's a good mix, like I was saying earlier, of old school and new, new school technology. This does look very much like the Honda, uh, which I'm not a fan of, but overall, like the screen is really good. And sorry about the wind, guys. It's just a really, really windy day. Hopefully the mics are, are helping some, but you know, it's just a, it's a nice bike to ride. It's lighter than this, that's for sure. It's definitely got a lot of power to it. Uh, engine runs really cool, so you don't really get any roasting. The Roadmaster he used to have, man, that thing got so hot. That 2000 and, uh, was it 16? Man, if you were in a stoplight with that thing on and it was a bacon hot day, I mean, it was, it sterilized you. It was just crazy hot. The, the second one he had, which was a couple years after that, definitely improved on the cooling. And then uh, the white one he had after was his, I think his best bike. He should never have sold that for this, but you know, he's getting older, he says, and he wants a lighter bike, right? And that was the thinking, I think. And he wanted the new engine and all that. But yeah, I'm glad you like the bike, Dad. So. It's time for lunch. It is time for lunch. So we're gonna call this clip a day. We are on Highway 111, heading to Teleco Plains, about 2,000 miles on this bike now. I thought this was a good point in the video where I'll take a minute and just explain the driving dynamics. So this is a bike that has a little bit more CCs than the 114, right? Which I showed you in the garage not long ago. And it likes to rev a little bit higher than that bike. So what I mean by that is it has a taller six gearing. So it doesn't like to lug as much. So what I've been doing on these hills is I've been downshifting. So where I might have been able to take it in fifth, I'm doing it in fourth. Or if I might have been able to take it in sixth, I'm doing it in fifth. And the engine just feels like it's just more happy. As far as all the other controls, God dang it, everything is so flipping butter on this thing. The clutch is butter. The brakes are bitey and progressive. Everything just feels balanced and weighted. You can just take your hands off the, the handlebars and just glide. You know, as soon as the wind hits you, you kind of got to readjust right. But overall, just a very incredible, comfortable bike to ride. Uh, this is such a beautiful spot. You know, we're just so dang blessed here in Tennessee. We have so many incredible roads. I haven't been down Highway 70 in a while. This actually feels pretty out there. <laughs> I'm actually getting the uh, the vacation vibe already, which is cool. So we'll, uh, we're gonna be in Teleco in probably about two hours. You know, it's a nice little cabin. Dad and I will have a cigar and uh, and a drink and then go experience what that place has to offer. But does it get much better than that? You know, it's absolutely perfect today. It's about 84 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. It's pretty dry today. A little bit of pollen in the air. You can, you can, you know, you can, smell it a little bit on the eyes so if you have allergies it's probably not a good day to ride but bike's happy i'm happy so yeah here is the teleco plains inn guys where we're staying and you can see the, the bikes are right outside here which is kind of cool this place is from 1923 really not much to it and they renovated the whole house isn't that neat? So you stay upstairs and then all this is downstairs. There's like a big old porch out front and then downtown Teleco is right there. Well, the uh, motorcycle sat out here all night. Everything's fine. A little wet, nothing that we can't solve. Get all the moisture off of it. I showed you guys the inside of the lobby. I mean, this is what it looks like from the outside. Just a really quaint place. Super quiet. Everything's old and rickety. It's got a lot of character to it. It's two hundred and sixty dollars for for one night for two rooms. I thought that was pretty good. So both got our own room and we had our own private bathroom. You can see all the bugs. So I might spend a little time doing a little morning rubber therapy. All right, guys. Here's a view. So we're on the Cherahola Skyway, and this is early spring. Tell me that that's not pretty damn majestic or what well, i thought i'd take a quick video guys we're on the tail of the dragon this is one of the curviest roads in all of america it's short and it's pretty much switchbacks and sweepers the entire way fantastic bikes heavy on a, on a road like this gotta be honest but it's still butter and you know we're, we're getting it i mean you can see here got about a half an inch uh, maybe an inch to push a little bit more, but then you start scraping these. You know, this bike is a touring bike, so I'm a sports bike. That's that. Well, guys, I just got home. Hope you enjoyed the uh, the content and just learning more about the Harley. Uh, look, I didn't do much of a driving portion. It was really windy today, and to be honest with you, it's not really I can tell you that much 
uh, as far as the drive. I will tell you a few things. The brakes, fantastic. Immediate bite, progressive, and strong. They also have linked braking, which makes it very safe. The clutch, a little heavier than uh, I would say most motorcycles, but pretty forgiving clutch engagement, so a little release, and then it immediately engages, right? And then it's, it's very butter though. Like everything on this motorcycle, literally everything, from the way you open up the saddlebags to the way you engage with the clutch and the brake, and just everything is a little gushier and kind of just dialed, you know? It's, it's, it's nothing is a, a jerk reaction from the clutch, you know, remember when I was revving it for you guys? Like it just, it just doesn't, you know, it's not like a it's like the BMW is. It's just kind of give it a little and then it kind of, you know what I mean? And so it's very, um, it's just comfortable and, and, and relaxing. And I really enjoy that about the motorcycle. And it's just, it's just a fantastic bike. I mean, it, it, is, a, it is a dream bike. I'm not gonna front about that, it's a lot of money, and it's something to aspire to. So if you have the opportunity to, to buy a, a Twisted Orange Pearl CBO, I, uh, I give you my blessing. I think it's the nicest motorcycle that Harley Davidson may ever make, frankly. I, I know that's saying a lot, like, oh wow, you know, but, but for its category, being a, a tourer, I just don't think anything they're gonna come out with in the future, whether they go electric or hybrid or God knows what they're gonna come up with, I just don't think it's gonna be better than this product. Uh, I hate to say that, I really do. Uh, I'm hopeful that Harley keeps, keeps innovating and coming up with cool stuff. It'd be nice if they had a windshield that went up and down, right? Like, it'd be nice if they had a few things that Indian has, but they're just doing their thing, you know? And, and I don't think the new stuff with all the TFT and the new redesigned shark fairing, I just don't think it's gonna be a big hit. But having said that, I'm already having uh, guys post uh, that they got a CVO allocation. And, and I saw a guy yesterday, he wanted 60, Two thousand dollars for his CVO. I'm like, seriously, sixty-two grand. I mean, it had like twenty-eight miles on it, but it just goes to show you, people are still trying to flip these things, still trying to make a little bit of a profit. <sighs> you know, that just goes to show you that the Fed doesn't need to cut interest rates, right? Because if that's still going on, then things are still too frothy in the economy. So, anyway, guys, I thought I got a fair deal. For $36,000, I'll pay another $2,800 in taxes to the state of Tennessee so we can make some roads and pay the patrol officers and all of that. Fantastic, but I'll be in this bike for $38,000 and I am going to ride the absolute you know what out of it. I should also mention insurance is about $800 on this motorcycle, so a bit more than most because it is obviously an expensive bike. So anyway, that's it. If you have any thoughts, go down in the comments, leave them. Please be nice, all right? I do this content for you. I hardly make a dime off of it. It's all just because I'm passionate, okay? If you have some constructive thoughts, if you think that your motorcycle from Harley-Davidson is the best or your certain year, by all means, share it. I'll Google it. I'd love to do some research on it. Uh, if you have some uh, other thoughts or you want to share this with a friend, I appreciate it. I got a lot of other motorcycle content on my motorcycle playlist. And if you happen to be interested in any of these cars that you're seeing behind me or any uh, car content, we've got a ton of reviews. I think I do a really good review. So check it out, guys. And I appreciate you watching. And that is it for me. We will talk to you later.